Welcome to an introduction to imaginary numbers. Today we'll answer the following essential questions. The most basic is, what is an imaginary number? And then um, you'll find out that, that the imaginary number is called I, and we want to find out what's special about I, what are its special properties. Uh, then we're going to raise I to, to certain powers, any power, like I to the first, I to the second, I to the third, or higher powers of I, and find out what happens. And the last question that we will answer in this video is, how can we simplify large powers of I? So those are our four essential questions, and here we go. First of all, to answer question one, I is an imaginary number, and its special properties are um, twofold. These are both kind of related. The first one is that I squared is the only number that can equal a negative. I squared is equal to negative one. And if you square root the both sides of this equation, you get I equals the square root of negative one. So these both go hand in hand. They're kind of related equations, and that's what's unique about I. So I allows us to take the square root of all negative numbers, not just negative one, but we can square root negative four, we can square root negative 10, anything, okay? So we're gonna take a look at that um, and a few other examples, taking square roots of negative numbers. The first one that we'll look at is the square root of negative four. It's a pretty simple square root and we'll separate it into two parts. First, the square root of four, and then we'll multiply by negative one. That gives us our negative four. The square root of four, the first part, is equal to two, and then the square root of negative one, the second part of the radical, is equal to i. So that's how you take the square root of negative four. Now, I have another example that I'd like you to try. So pause the video for a couple of seconds, do this one, and then we'll see if our answers match. Okay. I hope on this one you separated it into 25 times negative 1 and the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of negative one is i, so your answer is 5i. And then I have another one. It's a little tougher because it's not a perfect square, so it'll test your knowledge of square roots. But this last one is the square root of negative 98. So now again is a good time to pause the video and figure out the square root of 98 on your own. All right. The square root of negative 98 factors into 49 times 2 times negative 1. And the square root of 49 is 7. And the square root of 2 really doesn't have a nice square root, um, so it's going to stay in the square root house. And then we'll do the square root of negative one. I left a little space because the square root of negative one is i, and if I write it in front of the square root, there's no mistaking whether it's inside the square root or outside of the square root. So it's seven i times the square root of two. Next, we're going to look at powers of i. So um, I have a big list of powers of i starting with i to the zero power and going all the way to i to the 16th power. And somewhere in this process, you should start seeing some repetition and some patterns. So let's start with i to the zero power. i to the zero power is the same as any number to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. I to the first power has again the same properties of any other number to the first power. Any number to the first power is that number itself, that base. And then I squared, that's the reason I is in existence. Even though it's called imaginary, it does exist. 
I squared is equal to negative 1, and that was what we said was really special and unique about the number i. And then starting with i cubed, I like to look back at what came before. i cubed is the same as i squared times another i. That's first power. Um, and i squared times another i would be the same as negative 1, because that's i squared times another i. And that is negative i. i to the fourth power. I've pre-written this in. It's the same as what came before. i to the third is negative i times another i. So it's actually the opposite of i squared. And because i squared is negative 1, we've got the opposite of negative 1, which is positive 1. All right. i to the fifth power. That's equal to the one that came before, i to the fourth. i to the fourth is 1 times another i. And 1 times i is i. i to the sixth is equal to what came before times another i. That's a lot of dots. So i squared, which is negative 1. And i to the seventh, it's equal to what came before times i. So negative i. And I want to stop and look uh, because I think we've been recycling. Our answers were 1i, negative 1, and negative i. And then we kept going, but the answers repeated. We got 1i, negative 1, and negative i. So I'm wondering if we do it a third time, I think it officially counts as pattern. <laughs> Uh, if we get the same recycled answers of 1i, negative 1, and negative i, then it probably recycles forever and ever. Um, that's not very mathematically um, deductive proof, but we'll say it's a good pattern. So i to the eighth equal to what came before times another i. So that's negative i squared which is the opposite of i squared, and i squared is negative 1. We've got 1, just like we expected. i to the 8th. Okay, we're doing i to the 9th, sorry. i to the 9th is equal to i to the 8th times another i, which is i, and i to the 9th is equal to what came before times another i, which is i squared, which is negative 1. And I think we've got an ironclad pattern here. You can verify these if you would like. Um, the pattern is 1i, negative 1, negative i. Then we repeat 1i, negative 1, negative i. And we'll finish it with 1. So um, every four powers of i you just start over again. It just recycles. And if you notice the, the um, multiples of 4, like i to the 0, i to the 4th, i to the 8th, and i to the 12th, the answer on all of those was 1. Okay, I think we can safely say that i to any power that's a multiple of 4 is going to equal 1. So on my next page, I have a summary of how the multiples of 4 work. And then we have multiples of 4 plus 1 and multiples of 4 plus 2. So let's take a peek. i to the 0, i to the 4th, i to the 8th, i to the 12th, and so on. We're all equal to 1, or we predicted they would equal 1. So i to any power is equal to 1 if that power is a multiple of 4. Then we had things that were a little bit bigger, not 0 power, but first power. 
fifth power, odd powers, okay, 13, 17, 21. Um, they're all powers of I that are multiples of four, but one bigger, okay? So multiples of four plus one. I think we can say that I to any power is equal to I if you divide by four and have a remainder of one. So the key is not the quotient, but it's the remainder. You wanna look at the remainder when you're doing high powers of I. Then I squared, we know I squared is equal to negative one. And then it repeated every four. So at i to the sixth, i to the tenth, i to the fourteenth, we got tired, but we know it's going to repeat every time you add four to the exponent. So i to any power is equal to negative one if you divide by four and have a remainder of two. And then the final summary for powers of i is i to the third power. I to the third power was equal to negative I, and again it recycled at I to the seventh, I to the eleventh, I to the fifteenth, and so on. So I to any power, um, this is any whole number power, all right, is equal to negative I if the exponent can be divided by four and there's a remainder of three. Um, I do have a summary for simplifying large powers of I, and I have some, okay, summary, we'll do that. Uh, to find a simpler name for a power of I, you can divide the exponent by four, and then not worry about what answer you got, but do keep the remainder. The remainder is really important. So i to any whole number power is the same as i to the remainder power. Keep the remainder. It'll be a lot simpler than your very large original number. And there are only four possible answers, and they recycle around. It was 1i, negative 1, and negative i, and that's a really good pattern to know. Um, here are some problems for you to try to see. Um, what your expertise is and impress your teacher in class tomorrow if you can simplify i to the 76th power, i to the 94th power, i to the 57th, and i to the 83rd. That's it.